All right, let's talk to your family. For many parents, the goal, of course, is to raise happy, healthy kids that grow up into happy, healthy adults. But, of course, you're bound to hit some roadblocks and challenges along the way. So how do you help find calm and cooperation within your family? Well, here to help us break it down is Hunter Clark Fields. Not only is she a mindfulness mentor, best-selling author and Rhode Island native, we might add. Uh, you've got a new book coming out. We're looking at it right now, Raising Good Humans Every Day, sort of a sequel to your first book, Raising Good Humans. We'll talk about this in a moment. First, I want to get to sort of your journey to writing these books. Mindfulness has been something that you've been practicing for a long time. What kind of led you to sort of this profession or calling, if you will? I mean, the thing that led me to it was being needing the tools very desperately. I, I They call me a parenting expert, but it's because I was Failing at parenting is kind of how I saw it. I was yelling at my two-year-old daughter. I had a temper. I was like very reactive. And it was it really broke my heart. You know, this was exactly what I didn't want to do. So I had been reading about mindfulness and studying it since I was a teenager to help me through my ups and downs and help me even me out. And I had to I ended up returning to it to really help me calm my reactivity. And so so yeah, it, it's an incredible tool for parents. You know, they have CEOs use it and, and Navy SEALs and surgeons, very high stress jobs, like well parents have very high stress jobs too. And it helps us to just calm our reactivity so then you can use your whole brain and respond more effectively to your kids. So I feel like we hear mindfulness all the time and we try maybe to practice it, but what for those out there who are like, I know I hear it, but what does that mean in the space of parenting? Do you just stop, take a beat and <laughs> stop screaming? What, what does it actually mean and what would you recommend to people out there? So, I mean, I think what we need most as parents is to, when we are at our worst, let's say, is when we are very reactive, when we're on autopilot, we're like our parents, our temper comes out and we're yelling at our kids to stop yelling and that's really silly, right? And so what we need to be able to do is calm our reactivity and use our whole brain because our stress response makes it so that part of you know, the slower parts of the brain, prefrontal cortex area are sort of cut off, it kind of hijacks us so we can react instantly to a threat. Um, and what mindfulness practices help us do is that they, they help us to build that non-reactive muscle. They help us to calm our stress response, kind of build that muscle over time so that then in, we can get into some of those moments and then hopefully we can not explode. We can take pause, right, take a beat. We wanna be able to pause, use our whole brains and be able to connect with our kids and that way we aren't, you know, parenting in a destructive way to the relationship. We're actually like building connection and it, it helps enormously. I would, yeah, I would imagine. I don't have kids myself, but I mean, I try to practice mindfulness and it's a good way to look at it as like something, a work in progress. You'll get there. So when the moment strikes, you have the tools hopefully to react in the appropriate way. Yeah. I mean, mindfulness itself is the practice of paying attention, you know, putting our attention in the present moment with an attitude of kindness mm -hmm. and curiosity. And this is very different from the way we normally live our mm -hmm. lives because we're like a million miles ahead. We're in another space, we're planning, we're doing all these different things. And when we can do that, that's like, what I think is beautiful about that in parenting is not only does this ancient practice help us to be less reactive, help us to be more calm and connect, but it also helps us helps us to be in the present moment and like that's the only place we can love our kids you know we can't always be in the future and then be really there with our children and to me that's a big motivator and because it goes fast right parenting yes. so your first book raising good humans i'm guessing that was when your kids were little a little bit littler, a little but bit. They, I, when they were really little was when I was in a major learning phase because I was struggling and it was hard and I thought, okay, I need to dive into this mindfulness work and I also need to respond, you know, then I might have said something that was not so great. So then I need to figure out what to say to my kids. So my first book really focuses on the two tools that I think are most important, which are like mindfulness and calming our reactivity, taking care of our emotions, 
and then communicating skillfully. And with Raising Good Humans Every Day, I, it has 50 short chapters, so I get to expand into a lot of different areas about our home, our schedules, and you can really dive into it at different points. And like, a parent can read a, pay, a chapter in three to four pages, so it's like, you know, we have no time. We need to be able to just read this at night or like on the toilet or something and get that inspiration in. <laughs> Whenever you have a second, even yes. if it's in the bathroom. <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about self-care. I think that's another thing that we hear about. For parents, where do you stack that in importance wise um, when it comes to being a good parent? How important is it for parents to take a moment and make sure that they're good before they think about their kids? I mean, it's actually the number one priority. Your self, a parent's self-care is the foundation to be able to parent kindly and effectively because you're going to be, a, there's a whole myth of this sort of self-sacrificing parent, like that's a wonderful thing. And so we buy into this and then we go and we go and we go. And the problem with it is that it really, really does lead to burnout. And then you're not using your whole brain. You end up being reactive. You end up maybe resenting the whole situation. So parents overall in our society need more support. But we also have to recognize that taking care of ourselves is, is the foundation for being able to be kind, to be, being able to be effective, to being able to, you know, what we want from our kids, right, is we, the holy grail of parenting is for our children to be able to regulate their own emotions, right? We want that so desperately. <laughs> and the way we do that is we have to model it for them. We have to show it to them. We have to do that ourselves. And that's really a practice of self-care is to say, whew, oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm touching okay. your mic. But to say like, oh my goodness, I need a break right now. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm gonna take a moment to breathe and calm myself down so I can talk to you in a better way because this is a little overwhelming right now. That's really smart and effective parenting. Advice for parents who might be going through it right now is we're in the middle of the summer, school's out, maybe yeah. parents are feeling the heat right now. I mean, yes. literally and figuratively yes. when it comes to kids. Uh, the book comes out August 1st, right? Yes, August 1st. All right. Raising Good Humans Every Day. Hunter, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Monica. It's been great.